So I guess what I really need to stress that is making me suspicious, and probably my team suspicious, though we didn't have time to process it with everything going on and everybody being in a hurry, is the strategic precision, the surgical precision which with which all these coincidences and their probable cause and their response by these officers occurred. They see a text where Alfonso says he's going to give me a ride back and my text where they knew I was going to originally meet with them, go into the store, get my stuff, and then come back out to the car. Keep in mind, they got to Hannaford's long before I did because I took the bus. So they had been sitting there in that car with that beer can underneath the car for a while before I ever got there. But the police didn't show up before I got there. The police didn't zero in and approach the car the first time I said hi and talked to them and we were talking about basically the police screwing with us and that I told them they, I called it before I ever went in the store, but the police don't know that. But anyway, I go into the store, come out within less than five minutes, I would say, and we're supposed to believe that within that three minute time period, They, that Jana and Alfonso, who's Mexican, which means he's Native American, got into a loud argument that somebody could hear several yards away is what they would have to have been able to hear. Them supposedly arguing several yards away in a car with loud music and the windows up. And the police got a call about a yelling coming from a car with the windows up and the music going and their response was the exact moment that they already knew per our text that I was going to be coming out and they thought I was going to be getting into that car to get a ride back to my camp spot because I didn't tell anybody that I wasn't going to, I wanted the cops to think I was going to get in that car. That's why the cop was recorded trying to put me, make me an inhabitant of that vehicle and therefore subject to questioning and search. So this, especially when they already knew that the sheriff's department, I mean, all of the law enforcement is linked. So when the sheriff pulled them over and cleared them to go back on the road, they had to come. I think the I think the sheriff already knew since all of these cops and Weinberger and their lawyers and everybody's under surveillance. As soon as Alfonso told me that the sheriff had already pulled them over and let them go, that tells me the sheriff department already knew what was going to happen at Hannaford, and they wanted to see what condition Alfonso and Jana were in. And so their whole story about drunken driving wasn't going to fly because they knew the sheriff already let him go. So they had to come up with a whole new story. And I find it hard to believe that of all the time that Jana and Alfonso were sitting in that parking lot with that the beer can under their car, that the police waited that they're, they're exact, when they get the call, they get dispatched, and they don't show up before I get I get off the bus and walk into the Han which is a very long walk from the bus stop to the Hannaford store. And since they're parked close to the handicap and where they charge the electric cars, that's, you know, damn near a quarter of a mile or eighth of a mile. It's a long walk. They didn't approach us the first time because I, I just got off the bus, so I couldn't be an inhabitant of the vehicle. The police knew, per my text, that I was going to go into the store, make a purchase, and come back out. So they waited to respond to this call that supposedly happened 
within a three minute time period that I talked with them about what was going on, warned them about police fuckery, went into the store, grabbed my dog food, grabbed my meat, checked out, got back out to the car, three, four minutes tops, maybe five. And they strategically wait till I get back to the car where they think I'm going to load my stuff in that car and I'm going to be subject to search and seizure and part of this alleged violence and uh, basically what they got recorded using was Joe Biden's super predator crime bill rhetoric. I'm Native American. Alfonso's Mexican, which makes him indigenous to North America, which makes him Native American. She's a female in recovery. I'm AA, though I was never really a true addict or alcoholic. That was all them leaving me in pain from cancer and not telling me. But I'm still part of the program. Don't matter. AA doesn't discriminate. I met Chad in AA, so this is all AA business. So that's Title IX rape because they're doing this on behalf of University of Vermont, University of Central Florida, and University of Missouri faculty and admin. So just because it ain't happening on campus, it's on happening on behalf of people on those campuses, including former MU Chancellor Andrew Cartwright, who's now conveniently the president of UCF, University of Central Florida, where Chad was a law professor. Get the fuck out of here. So anyway, it's Title IX, Brady.